Welcome to Anvil Hunting, I'm BJ Holdsworth and this is our winter. Yeah, Harold's hunt was great for a whole lot of reasons. We'd seen that stag and a handful of hinds grazing early in the morning and rather than risk just bundling on in there, we decided to wait until we knew which way the wind was, was working. We have been stung in that valley before. Uh, there's some fickle sort of mountain type air that can go any direction and we wanted to get it right. We decided that we would take the safe approach. We left it till the afternoon when there was a shore breeze in our face. We had a rough idea of where we could get to, where it would be shootable from and it played out fairly well. I can remember when we walked in there, Harold said to me, BJ says, I don't like these hills too much. And my reply was, well, I'm sorry, Harold, but Everything we do here in New Zealand is on the side of a hill. You better get used to it. What we found was the perfect sniper's position. There was a, a small flat area overlooking the valley and it was only a few minutes that we found the animals where they were. They were bedded under some, under some adult willow trees and we just had to be patient. We just had to wait. They were about 400 yards away. We decided to set up there rather than risk taking things any further. We didn't have a lot of cover where we were, this was fairly open country, the trees have got no leaves on them so we still had to be pretty cautious. We got set up and we just decided to wait. Suddenly the stag got up, he had a shake, he had a scratch and it was all on. What a shot. No muck it around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Harold had pulled off the perfect sniper's shot and his stag was down. Yeah, the stag was a beauty. We, we walked up there and, and, and Harold, I've never actually seen Harold walk so quickly. <laughs> we got up there and yeah, it was a nice stag. It was nice and heavy. It had enough points, I think 22 from memory. 22. 11 by 11. <laughs> Thanks, BJ. You're welcome. You're welcome. Wait till you see these photos. <laughs> Being part of what it is to take your first game animal is, is kind of a special deal for, for a guide and I think it's just as important as any trophy hunt. You know, you're changing and, and making a transition from uh, someone who owns a rifle and, and goes hunting to someone who's a successful hunter. And, that, and that's kind of a big deal for us and, and it's something that, that, uh, that I enjoy. I guess it is a privilege. Steve was faced with a pretty tough sort of a challenge. We were hunting free ranging deer on fairly open country. We had a few trees that were leafless to, to use to, to hide ourselves. Unfortunately when we dropped into the valley we got a few things wrong. We spooked a few deer. So it wasn't easy. It wasn't a walk in the park. The 
shot was 300 yards. First one down, eh? Yeah. <laughs> On a beautiful midwinter's day. Oh, stunning. Absolutely stunning. That's great. That'd be good, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Steve. We'll have you back for round two any day. This is the last hunt of the season for us. This was in the first week of August and to have a honeymooning couple here was pretty cool. It was, it was pretty new for us. We were excited about the prospect of having a couple of good keen young hunters on the property and generally being in this part of the winter, the animals are gonna be on their feet more. The weather is often a little bit cooler than what it is in, in March and April, for example. And uh, it, it's, it's always good hunting. We, we have a lot of success um, as the animals will quite often graze right out till sometimes nine o'clock in the morning to, to maintain their body weight. It's, it's a matter of survival and often the red deer are, are a lot easier to find. They'll, they'll come out of the trees and, and they'll be feeding up sort of early in the evening too. So the hunting was going to be good and, and we were looking forward to it. And, you know, to have a young couple on what we call a hunting moon was, was pretty cool. They'd been somewhere in some tropical island doing all that, you know, that romantic stuff. They got all that out of the road and they were coming here to do some hunting. I couldn't think of a better place anywhere in the world to spend your hunting moon than with Amble Hunting right here in New Zealand. This was Western Stag Hunt. This hunt was kind of challenging to catch on film because our main cameraman was at home with man flu. He was sitting at home on the couch clutching his pink handbag and couldn't join us. We were going to have to wing it and try and do it all on our own. Now, multitasking and, and I don't seem to work too well together. I'm the sort of guy that can have trouble walking in a straight line and chewing gum at the same time, let alone trying to work out three cameras and get a hunter onto the right stag. This was going to be a challenge, but we were going to give it a go. I didn't even get a chance to get the camera on the animals properly. I was having trouble stabilizing my tripod. The wind was blowing, it was, it was moving the camera around. Poor old Weston didn't even know which stack to shoot. The animals had seen us, they all escaped. They took off, they jumped over the fence, they disappeared. It was a real dog's breakfast. It would be safe to say that this was the breakfast that you'd see a Labrador puppy enjoying. It was a real mess. But we would go home, we would regroup, and we'd have another go the next day.
Well, we headed out early the next morning and the weather was atrocious. Mother Nature had a migraine, but the stags were everywhere. After spooking a small group of mature stags into the timber, we moved around to the point and we found another large group of stags right below us. Weston had to make his shot. There was an old mature warrior amongst them and all we needed was a little bit of luck. Yeah, Weston made a great shot under probably quite a bit of pressure. I don't know how much he could see through that scope, but our camera lenses were all covered in water. It was, yeah, it was, it was pretty challenging. Weston had taken a pretty good sort of a stag. I think he had 16 or 17 points. He was a really old stag and he was happy. What a lot of people don't realise is we are a sheep and cattle farming operation primarily and we winter over 6,000 sheep on this property. These sheep are domesticated, they're handled frequently by us, they're shorn twice a year for example and we farm for their fibre, their wool and their meat. What we have on the back of our property is an undomesticated flock, a flock of a feral slash wild sheep that are able to do their own sheep thing. They're out there, they're a wonderful species to hunt, they're a lot of fun, they're a fantastic addition to a red stag hunt and they make attractive mounts. They're very inexpensive in comparison to their North American cousins and we call it quite a relaxing sort of a hunt. We don't have to get out of bed early in the morning to go hunt them, they're, they're out there doing their thing all day so we can go out there at any stage of, of the morning and, uh, and, 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 and have some fun and, and have a good hunt. Yesterday we shot a stag. Weston made a pretty good shot under very difficult conditions, under a fair bit of pressure. <laughs> yeah, it was. This morning it's all nice and relaxed, such as ram hunting is. We've got an abundance of wild sheep on the back of our property. Lauren's going to re-familiarise herself with Miss Scarlet here. She's already a good shot, we already know that, but we're just going to make sure she's got her eye in. We've got a nice little valley up here and she's going to take a 300 yard shot and then we're going hunting. Dead center. All right. sheep out here. There's a couple of white ones that we don't really want in this flock and one of them is an exceptionally big ram. We found some more sheep around the corner and there's a really nice ram amongst them. What we might try and do is the double. It's not often we get the opportunity to, to take two rams in one day but today with these two separate flocks it could work out quite well. 
or he might be able to go for his and hers hunt all on the same day. Could be pretty cool. Look at this ram, he is an absolute beauty. This is, this is probably one of the nicest rams we've taken in a while. He's got good bases, he's got good length in his horns, he's got this lamb tip still on here, still intact, and a beautiful white blaze up his snout. This is an absolute ripper, this is exactly what we want. Here's what Lauren had to say post hunt. But we've had nothing but a great experience with ample hunting and BJ. He's been awesome. Then it was Weston's turn to hunt to try and complete the double. We stalked around the back of the mountain and slowly slid over the ridge. The sheep were gone. When a guide shrugs his shoulders, it's not good. While we were trying to work out which way the sheep had gone, suddenly we saw them below us. We had to make another attempt at getting closer. We dropped around the side to try and get inside 300 yards. But alas, it didn't work. The sheep had smelled us. Well, our sheep got away. Now we're about 450 yards. A bit out of reach. And he's in amongst a group of how many sheep there must be? Easy, must be 60. Unfortunately, I think they might have smelt us and drifted out. So we have to make another plan. We made another stalk to try and get inside 300 yards. Weston's made a pretty good shot at approximately 300 yards and he absolutely smoked that ram. Absolutely drilled him. 7mm rim mag. Yeah. Did the deed once again. Yeah, yeah. You rolled right down the hill. It's almost instant. Here we are, midwinter. How warm do you reckon it is? Oh. Fahrenheit. 
got to be 55 out, pushing yeah. 60 almost, it feels like. Oh, well, we got well, jackets on, but. 55 for sure. 55 yeah. midwinter. Beautiful sunny day. There's a few clouds up there, but a stark contrast to what we had yesterday when we were hunting stags. I have to say that. We had about a two and a half hour stock on this thing going back and forth and finally got it. It was a great hunt and a lot of fun. Weston's ram was a beauty and it concluded a great hunting moon and a great hunting season with ample hunting. Coming up next time with ample hunting, I give some goat hunting a go and well things didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> Dad completely missed a goat with his bow and arrow. That's your way to look. I am too. I had a, I had a little accident. <laughs>